it's the end of season number seven, and I can't help but feel like we've been here before. Second in the league after the league season's finished. Playoff semi-finals today, and bad news for us, Hartlepool, the team who finished third, are guaranteed to be in the final. Are they the new Dagenham? Are we the new Dagenham? Are we finally going to make out the Vanarama National League? Oh, small matter as well, FA Trophy final. We've got a lot of football manager to play today, and I'm rather nervous. Let's get into things, shall we? Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Welcome to the end of season number seven. We have been here before. We have Vanarama National League playoff action. Semi-final, hopefully a final as well. And no matter what, there will be a trip to Wembley as we are, of course, in that FA Trophy final. Now, just to recap the end of the league season, as you can see here, we did end up finishing in second place. A really good finish. We actually finished on goal difference ahead of Hartlepool. If you're wondering, how does that compare to last year? Well, we got four more points. We have a better goal difference as well if I'm not mistaken in fact 10 goals better um, we scored even more goals and actually conceded two goals less so I don't know in another 30 seasons maybe we'll be conceding kind of zero goals across the year if we're still in this league Imagine if I am still in the National League in 30 years' time. Now, just to look at the league matches themselves, there were, of course, five left of the season. We won four of them in a row. Some really good momentum built up. Wins against Scunthorpe. A win against Fylde, who we are taking on in the playoffs today in the semi-final. 3-0 against Gillingham. A win against Morecambe. Some of these rather difficult games as well. Gillingham were in the playoff fight. However, to end the league season, a defeat against a mid-table Notts County leaves me a little bit nervous. The only silver lining in all of this is we have had a week's rest. We Meanwhile, our opposition in Fylde actually had to play a game against Woking in the previous quarterfinal round. They scraped through 1-0. And well, I'm going to hope we can win today. And if you sat at home wondering how some of the teams that we have had in our league in previous years are doing now in League 2, you can see here Maidstone have made the playoffs of League 2, Bromley are in 13th, and even Dagenham, who beat us in the playoff in narrow fashion, finished 12 points above the drop. So clearly, the teams we've been doing battle with over the last few years are actually very good. And if we could secure promotion, I'd back us to do quite well in League 2. I don't feel like the gap between our league and the league above is actually that big. Now, there certainly is an air of deja vu as we approach the playoffs. Last year, Brandon Charles was our star striker, but he vanished at the end of the season. And Robbie Yeur, our star striker of this season, maybe not quite as emphatically, missed actually the last few weeks. He picked up a fractured wrist, and from there, he missed the end of March, most of April. And upon his return... He's not really done anything. In fact, one goal in his last 10. This is really not the time where I needed the goals to dry up. Now, truth be told, if we look at the average ratings, there's a few players actually who have been in some really, really good form lately. I can't believe I'm saying this. I think I have to start Perna at right back. He's got five assists in his last four games at right back, the Italian. I know there's some people head in hands thinking he really has gone insane. He's doing the same thing over and over. Look, I believe today Perna's going to be different. Now, unfortunately, one player who isn't going to be available, at least for this first game today, is Trey George. Was injured last episode, didn't get fit enough in time, has missed the entire end of the season. But what I would say is, in his absence, players have started to step up. And in fact, if we just look at the ratings in the last five games alongside Perna, Robbie Smith has looked very, very good when we have played him. A player who will be on the bench today, maybe... A debatably bold decision not to start him in this one, but I think I have to go with the quality that we have with Charles, Yeur and Arconte. Elsewhere, you can see Arconte and Charles have also been in some really good form. As much as Yeur has struggled, we have still been scoring goals. We still have been getting goals. And ultimately, against a final team who we beat earlier on last month... I have to believe that we can beat them in this one. Now, of course, if we make it through this game, we will be heading to Wembley for the final, of course, that being the playoff final. We also have the FA Trophy final, so there's a whole lot of football to play to end the season. It's a bit of an unusual situation where I know even if we bottle the playoffs immediately, I still have to do a cup final whilst feeling really sorry for myself. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case. Um, I'm hoping today's going to be a slightly longer episode in terms of the number of matches, and well... 
fingers crossed, we can have a nice, safe passage to the playoff finals. We are two wins away from promotion. We've got very close the last few years. This is our second year in a row finishing second in the league. And I might lose my sanity if we don't make out the National League this year. Perna on the near side. Lays it to Benjamin. We're having a little bit of the ball here, which is really nice to see. Benjamin with it at the back. Perna getting forward. He's been very good recently. And I'll tell you what, he finds himself in acres of space. The number 13 gets to the byline, crosses it. It's blocked. A Conte arrives from absolutely nowhere. Unfortunately... His header was just off target. Perna with the ball on this near side, looking to bring it forward. The right back, lots of space in front of him to maybe make something happen. The number 13 lays it to Hanusek. Brandon Charles hits it, and Brandon Charles, goal number 20 of the season. It's not quite the 40 or however many it was he got last year, but he's in on the score sheet. Hanusek with the assist. And I don't want to say I'm justified in the Perna selection because I know in my luck he will still get sent off. But he was involved in this play, bringing it forward, carrying the ball, created space for Hanusek. But to be honest, all credit has to go for Charles because that was a really good finish. We're only 17 minutes into this game. There's been a fair few highlights already for a game so young. Fortunately for us, they've been a lot in our favour and there could be another here. Hint of offside maybe, although I'll tell you what, Conte's still going to try and finish it. It was cleared off the line. It wouldn't have counted anyway, but half a chance. You might have also noticed it. Carlton is in goal for us. Rob, the man who we signed from Portsmouth. He's come into the team. He's replaced McDonald. We ended the season strong with him in goal. And so far, the youngster, just as a reminder, he's only 19. He's a child. Um, he's doing very well in goal for us on the big stage here. Don't know how good he is at important matches. So bit of a gamble today. But so far, I mean, he's had one save to make. He's done his job. That's all that we can ask. That said, of course, I would love a second goal here. What I would not love to see is Benjamin give away the ball like that. Forster bursts through the middle, and I'll tell you what, Harry Forster has just scored a very good goal there. That was actually a really sick finish. I mean, Benjamin gives away the ball. Let's acknowledge the elephant in the room. This is not what you want to see in a playoff semi-final, is it? His, his brain stops working. Um, we need to control, alt, delete, and end the process. Restart it. I mean, hmm. An annoying goal to concede. A good finish in the one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not going to blame, blame Carlton for not saving that one. I'm a little bit paranoid about Ferguson and Gallagher both on booking so early on in this game. I've got to hold a little bit of faith and a little bit of trust in them, I think, that they can remain disciplined here. But at half-time, well, I was about to say it's going to be 1-1, one -one, but with two minutes left out of added time and two minutes played, there might be a chance here. Brandon Charles, the goal scorer, to your who hits it, the keeper spills it, and your. I've kept my faith in him. I'm very, very, very close to dropping him going into this one. I've left him on the pitch, and I'll tell you what, he's done the business. He's missed the business. He brings a briefcase into the dressing room with him, and, uh, well, Charles, in the wide area, pulls it back, and then Jörg has an effort, which, should the keeper do better with? I'd say so. I'd be annoyed if that one went in against me, but it's 2-1. We're up at the break. It's not been all plain sailing. It has been a pretty good performance, though. Okay, the players are happy, I'm happy, good team talk, into the second half we go. I am going to leave the players on bookings on the pitch for now. I might live to regret it, they've got an early set piece here, it's whipped back post, and they've scored again, one minute into the second half. Why did I praise the players? Why didn't I just criticise them? It's 2-2. Two, two. A few years ago, we had a real big issue with set pieces, we just couldn't deal with them. I thought we were over that hump, but it's come back to bite us yet again. It's an indirect direct free kick in a wide area, to the back post. And it's just a really simple header. They've had three shots and two of them have gone in. Well, I was really, really tempted to take off Gallagher, but now I've seen Perna on a book in. I'm, I'm not risking it. You know what? We're going we're gonna to bring in McGuinness at right back and Ferguson on a book in. I don't like to see Slimani. On you come, my friend. There is a real temptation to make my third change here, but with 30 minutes still left to play, plus possible added time, I don't want to run out of subs. Still don't know if I trust Carlton with the ball at his feet. He doesn't really look like... He looks like he's concentrating really hard on the dribbling there. Did anyone notice that? We've got a chance, though. Ball with Charles. He's already scored one. Goes down in a heap. It's a penalty in the playoff semi-final. I mean, it all came from Carlton's excellent distribution. Hanusek with a chance from the spot. He hits it and the keeper saved it. I've hit myself in the head. I couldn't... It, Nothing simple here at Guernsey. Right, you know what? 20 minutes left. I'm making a change. McGuinness has got a booking as well. Right, lads, I'm, I'm going to tell them to ease off tackles. That way, no one in the comment section can tell me, why didn't you tell them to ease off tackles? Because I did. Owen Phillips is going to come in for our Conte. Charles is going to go out onto the right-hand side on his right foot. It's 2-2. Two, two. I'm shouting to man more. 15 minutes left. Look at the XG. Look at the performance. We deserve to be in the final. The last thing I want right now 
is to have to play extra time ahead of the final. I don't want tired players. There might be a chance here. Slomani, the sub, puts it in. McGuinness to your. It's in the back of the net. Two of the subs have linked up and we found a breakthrough. I'll be honest. Of the subs I've made, McGuinness is not the man I expected to get the assist at right back, but we're not going to complain. 82 minutes played, it's 3-2. It's not been a simple semi-final, but we'll take it. It's a Robbie Your header, the target forward. He's popped up again with one, and I absolutely love him. Do I make a confession here? Do I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Please don't judge me as a football manager for this. I was meant to sub on Robbie Smith at, on the left-hand side, not Phillips, who is also left-footed. Phillips hasn't been in good form. Robbie Smith has been in good form. I mean, look at look at the bars. And then I've not subbed him on today. I've subbed on the wrong Scottish striker, but it's worked. So does it matter? No, it does not. I, I am an idiot, though. Don't get sent off now, McGuinness. I might need you in the final. He plays it down the line to Brandon Charles. He's through. Should pull it back to your. Does pull it back to your. And that really should have been a goal from there, shouldn't it? Okay, five minutes of added time. We've played 93 minutes. Just one more minute to see how. It's not been straightforward. It's not been simple. I do not care. They did not have a shot after they scored their second goal. We dominated that second half. Brandon Charles is back. Robbie Yarr's getting a 9.0. McGuinness on off the bench has got a 7.5. And we are on our way to Wembley. And in that final, we're taking on Hartlepool who finished third. It is literally the Dagenham and Redbridge situation all over again. The teams who finished second and third. Two teams, one of which is us, and the other team, the team we've battled with all year. Last time I went to Wembley and did a live commentary... We lost when I did the away day. So you know what? I'm going to start a new kind of conspiracy. A, a new, what's the word I'm looking for? Superstition. That's the word I'm looking for. Look, if we win against Hartlepool and I don't do an away day, I may never visit Wembley on a Jack Dozen away day again. I am worried that we are going to fatigue the Wembley away days, especially if I'm just stuck in the National League forever. Every year we visit for the end of season playoffs and lose. Yeah, that doesn't sound like fun to me. Anyway, that playoff final is six days away. We're going to rest up the players. We might have a couple of other players who are injured back as well, which would be very, very nice. We were here last year. We bottled it last year. Oh, please, football manager gods. Just, I need a different outcome. Let's go make it happen. Okay, folks, we are back. And we are back actually on Tuesday, not Saturday or Sunday, or whenever the playoffs was previously scheduled. That's right. For whatever reason, Wembley was double booked and Horsham v Havana and Waterlooville in the Van Arama National South was scheduled for the same day as us. So our game got kicked back. I'll be honest, that is the first bug I've seen using this lower league database in seven seasons. In the grand scheme of things, it's not the worst one because it does mean for us at least, Trey George is fit enough for the bench. Now, of course, going into this game against Hartlepool, I am desperate for promotion. I am hungry for promotion. Unfortunately, Lewis Ferguson and Perna, both unavailable for this game. So, with Ferguson out, I'm turning to an old friend. This might be the last time he ever dons the colours of Guernsey, but when we've used him in recent games, he's done okay. So, Gibua, welcome back, mate. You are in the team, mostly because Ferguson's out, Perna's out, Tanner Jones and Trey George just players I don't quite trust enough with the current fitness level, especially in the case of Trey George. There was a temptation to play Ryan Borg. I... Don't think it's worth playing him, though. So, yeah, Gibu is back in the team. At centre mid on attack, we are going to go with Slomani. He has impressed me on off the bench in the last couple of games where I've brought him on. He's a player who can really add something to the game. My plan really being is Slomani gets the first 45 minutes. Trey George comes on at half time against a tiring defence. Even if he's not fully fit, he should be very good. And in the final third, Arconte drops to the bench. Big call made for this one. Robbie Smith. I know he hates big matches, but he was meant to come on last game and I forgot about him. And he ended the season so, so well. He could consider himself unlucky not to feature last game. And well, with Arconte disappointing and Charles and you are playing well, that is going to be the front three. Of course, Carlton holds down his spot in goal, and you might have noticed it. McGuinness in at right back. Maybe Perna being suspended is the game saving me from myself. That's what it feels like. Anyway, we are going to submit our team for this one. Like I said, no Jack does an away day, at least for this game. If we win this game, never doing an away day at Wembley, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. If we lose this one, I will go to Wembley and be sad. In a few days' time, it's not even a week away now, the cup final against Yeovil. It's, uh, well, it's at the week 
weekend. It's currently Tuesday, so let's win this and then come back later and win again. Of course, last year's visit to Wembley was amazing for our bank balance, so the fact we're there twice this year, surely that means it's going to be twice as good. Hopefully we can make some money. Hopefully we can get promotion here. Hartlepool are a good team, but they are a team that we, I really believe can beat on our day and we might have a chance here. Gibua back in the team, crossing it in and Brendan Charles is there. I mean, he's not the man I back to win the ball in the air. I have him set to just go forward on corners, make a nuisance of yourself. And well, the, the corner by Gibua, by the way, back in the team, good choice that, hit over everyone and just landed on Charles's foot for the volley. It's in the bottom corner. We're a goal up. I'm now sat here trying to remember, were we a goal up against Dagenham at any point last final? I don't think we ever were. I don't think we've been in this situation before. I'm trying not to get carried away. We've got a chance here. Gallagher on the near side to Gabua, whipped in. Charles looked offside there, but well, the flag's not gone up and McGuinness is going to keep the play alive. In at right back, crosses it in. Smith's there. Robbie Smith, goal number 20 of the season for him. I feel like Robbie Smith is a player who's just been on the bench and I've rotated him in and out. And under the radar, he's just been scoring goals for fun. I mean, apparently he hates big matches, but he took that opportunity like he's loving it. McGuinness crosses it in and the left forward, really good header. McNally got down to it, but couldn't turn it around the post. We're 2-0 up inside 20 minutes and I don't know how to feel. If it wasn't for the previous precedent, I'd probably feel relaxed right now. But I know what we're like. Even if we were to get a third, I won't relax. Gibua. The fact we can consider the possibility of a third, I suppose, is a testament to how well we're playing. Ball played down the line towards Charles. He's going to battle for it in there. Wins it back well. Gibua, edge of the box, goes down in a heap, and it's a penalty. Hanusek shouldn't take it, though. We're not having Hanusek take it. He missed the last one. I don't trust him. Brandon Charles is looking confident. I know he missed penalties last year. I know he missed a penalty in the playoff semi-final last year. Hanusek did it this year. Charles, step up, score. He's missed another penalty. I can't believe it. Oh, uh, uh, is that another penalty? No. Um, I looked away, so I didn't see what happened. I just saw our player in a heap. We've missed another penalty. Oh, my. I can't. Aren't penalties like meant to be a 70% chance of a goal or something? I mean, that is a mad save by Carlton. We could have been 3-0 up, and instead our keeper's having to bail us out. They've got a corner. I can't remain calm. Ball's crossed in. Benjamin heads it away. Can we get it away? We can. Okay, collect yourself, everyone. I'm going to shout to man more. Half an hour played it. We're two goals up. It could have been free. It should have been free. If we go on to lose this now, I'm going to regret that penalty. Take a change for the rest of my days. Five minutes left of the half. Harley Paul haven't done much. We've not really done much either, though, which I suppose when you're two goals up is absolutely fine. There might be a chance here. Slomani bringing it forward and giving away the ball. Not what we want to see. Thompson Blair in behind. The number 21 puts in a shot. And Carlton, I mean, it was straight at him. He's made the save again, though, in goal. I want to sit here and big up Carlton at halftime and how well he's playing. I don't want to jinx him. I've told the players there I'm happy, which, I mean, that could invite complacency, as we saw last time. So immediately, now the players are out, just going to shout, demand more, which is going to make some of them sad, some of them happy. But maybe it avoids complacency, telling they need to do more. I don't know. That's the logic I'm going with. Okay, I'm going to take off Slomani. I'm going to bring in Trey George. Robbie Yer's not having the best of games, but I think we just keep him on. McGuinness is on a booking. That concerns me slightly. Let's tell him to ease off tackles. I'm going to make the one sub for now. We're two goals up. We don't need to overcomplicate things. We are 30 minutes away from League Two, and I've never been so excited, nervous, scared, just a bundle of emotions. 20 minutes left. It's not been a classic final. Early goals, you think, oh, maybe maybe this is going to be a fiesta of goal scoring. It's not been that. But I'll tell you what, we have nullified them going forward. And that has been a big strength of ours, I feel like, throughout this end of season run. Defensively, we have tightened things up. And with eight minutes left, and a team that is, well, just doing what is needed of them, I think that this is going to be the least sexy way I've ever won a playoff game. It, I mean, we've got two early goals and then just sat on it. Three minutes of added time. We missed a penalty. It could have been a recipe for disaster. But you know what? We held our nerve. We've held our bottle. There's a highlight starting now. It does not matter. I'm here to tell you, folks, we do not care about this highlight. Let them have a goal back. Let them have a little taste of hope. Go on, make it 2-1, Hartlepool. Well done. Enjoy it. It's done. It's 2-1. But that surely is the last kick of the game. I mean, if they score another now, I look like the biggest idiot in the world.
Not great defending. It's almost as if we switched off. The players are dreaming of the champagne. They're dreaming of the confetti falling. We've played 14 seconds over added time. It's done. I'm here to say it's done. Hit skip. Blow the whistle, ref. We are up. It's taken a couple of seasons longer than I would have liked. Obviously, we missed the playoffs by bottling it two years ago. Last year, we bottled the final. Finally, we're over our curse. And all it took was me to cancel Jack Dozen away day to Wembley. I'm back here in a week. But for now, let's just savour this. This is the one that mattered. Getting out of this division. I, I've got to be honest, from a selfish YouTuber point of view, I don't want to be in the same league four years in a row. That is the point of stagnation. So... Oh, breathe a sigh of relief. The board wants to request potentially turning professional. Yes, 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 yes. That's a great idea. Turn pro. Thank you, Neil. We are now planned to go professional by July 2029. We can offer players full-time deals. We can sign players to proper contracts. We can train people for more than two sessions a week. But I'm blooming happy about that. And in terms of budgets for next year, wage budget of 23,000, transfer budget of 50,000. Oh, breathe a sigh of relief. We are out of the National League and we still have another game to play our first chance at proper silverware an FA trophy that would be fun of course with us now being promoted this is the one shot I have now to win this competition looking at our club balance it's gone up by about 200,000 off the playoff final I don't know if we'll get a similar attendance for the FA trophy final but I want to believe it could happen last year when we played in the Wembley final we had 17,900 away fans turn up as the away team this year we've made it to the final, and I don't want to poo-poo our fans, but only 11,000 of them showed up. That is a shocking drop-off, isn't it, in the amount of people who really believe in us. I do wonder if that has to do with the fact it was a midweek game. Maybe that actually played a factor. I don't know. Answers on a postcard. Let me know what you think. We're going to get ready for this next one, though. We're taking on Yeovil. FA Trophy final. Let's make it just an all-winning affair to end this year. Let's bow out in the National League and non-league football on a high. We're now at the point where, in Park to Prem, we've kind of gone from Park to... Lower League English Football League Football. That doesn't roll off the tongue very well. Right, Yeovil up next. Let's go do it. I got a level with you. This Yeovil game, it feels like an optional extra at the end. You know when you order some food from a market and they try and charge you extra for some condiments? That's how I feel about this. This, is, this could be the cherry on top of a very good season. But even if we were to lose this... I, I won't be that upset. In terms of the team news, Perna and Ferguson are still suspended. So we have a similar kind of setup, I suppose, to the last game. In fact, when it comes to the actual team, I'm not changing anything. This is the team that won the final here less than a week ago. We're back at Wembley. It's round two. We're taking on Yeovil. And if we win this, I mean, it'd be amazing. But I I'm just happy we're going professional. Happy and relieved. Probably more relief than anything. I will say now, Yeovil's system, this three at the back with kind of four midfielders. I suppose it's wing backs and two defensive mids. This is the one formation that when we've come up, up against has actually caused our three strikers issues. It does seem to nullify us pretty well. I've not really formulated a plan B yet, but it's one of those things where if we lose today, it'll probably be a little bit of a reminder to me. Maybe I do need to have kind of an extra trick up our sleeves. That said, if we win here, I'll just forget about it. And so we come up against this formation again and I get annoyed. And well, I'll tell you what, if at first you don't succeed, try, try and try again. Robbie Yeo had a couple of efforts. They were saved, blocked, or maybe hit the woodwork. Eventually, Charles has got that in. And I mean, it's a packed Wembley today. Look how, look how many fans have turned up. If there were ambitions to have a similar amount of money raised from this game compared to the playoff final that might have been a tad ambitious this is it, it looks like a ghost town Yeovil have had a lot of good play in this game and well they've got a corner here in a dangerous area back post header Carlton clutches onto it of course our new goalkeeper is an amazing goalkeeper I've never really acknowledged it he does have like two acceleration and free pace he's not quick off his line but who needs to be quick off your line we're not playing with a sweeper keeper he just needs to be able to stop footballs and stop footballs He's done throughout this year. Hopefully he can continue to do it in this game as Yeovil try and play it forward. McGuinness read that superbly and now Brandon Charles is in a wide area. Robbie Yer is lurking in the middle. Goes to McGuinness. Hanusek could hit it. Does hit it. What turns it around the post? Wilson with the ball at the back for us, of course. One of only a few new signings we made this year, Wilson, who have started throughout the year in at centre-back. He's been an ever-present part of the team, a bit of an unsung hero, but, well, he's, he's getting his praise now, and, well, we might be praising Charles again because I'll tell you what, Brandon Charles has scored. The assist by Robbie Yeo was absolutely incredible, and it is now 2-0 inside half an hour. I'm getting deja vu.
Can we discuss this pass by your? Like, this This is an outrageous pass. Just threads it through the whole defensive line. Charles is running onto it at the back post, tucks it away. Confident, cool, collected. Charles and Yer really have stepped up to a whole new level this episode. They have been absolutely superb as a pairing. As, to be fair, has our defence, with the exception of the goal that we score, conceded late on in the playoffs. The final we look great, maybe slightly less so in the previous game. I suppose the bar with our defence has been very low for the last few years. It's actually looked competent today. Going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. They're confused and demotivated. I should have done the team talk that I did last game. Now I've just confused Charles and Robbie. Uh, as long as they don't hurt themselves in confusion, it's going to be fine. Just coming up to the hour mark, McGuinness has been nursing an injury for a lot of this game, so I'm going to take him off and bring in Williams. Robbie Smith hasn't been great out on the left. Let's bring in Trey George. Came on in the set final of the playoffs at centre mid. Today we're going to see how he does as part of the front three. Just 10 minutes left of this game and at 2-0, Yovel are hanging on in there. A third goal I feel like would secure this for us, but they have looked on occasion dangerous. And while they have got the ball here and they are bringing it forward, Tala playing as that centre attacking mid, a really critical part of their team and how they build up the play. Lancaster making a fantastic run forward here. Lays it to Haste, who's going to put it in. Heverington heads it against the woodwork. Gallagher, just get it away from danger. That's not a good clearance, but Gibua just about deals with it. Couple of minutes left here, still 2-0. I mean, if it's going to follow the last game, we're going to concede here and it's going to finish 2-1 with a late consolation. I'm hoping, though, we can hold on to a clean sheet here. What would be even better is a goal. And, well, Trey George on off the bench, coming back from injury bringing it forward, lays it back to Gallagher, her new sec. I don't know if that was a shot or a cross. What I do know is Watts has collected it. I don't know why for the playoff final we didn't get a trophy lifting ceremony. I don't think I accidentally skipped it. Good news though, we can savour this one here and we can really appreciate how packed Wembley was for this FA Trophy final. Some people will say this is a trophy that doesn't really matter. I'm putting it in the trophy cabinet. I'm adding it to my CV when I apply for real football management jobs in real life. Here we are, Guernsey FC, not just promoted to the Football League, but bowing out with an FA Trophy win. Two wins and two at Wembley. We may never do another Wembley away day again. Going to tell the players I'm very happy. Everyone's just on cloud nine right now. I'm sat thinking tomorrow's transfer special is going to be action packed. We've got plenty to add. Instead of using all this confetti, can we save some of it for the transfer budget, please? Okay, we win the FA Trophy. We lift it. For that, we actually get £63,000, which is not an insignificant amount of money. Presumably, there was some attendance on top of that. How many fans did turn up for it? Uh, 13,000 Yeovil fans, about 6,000 of our own fans. Feels like every time we go to Wembley, the support halves. Club balance is in a really, really good spot. £561,000 in the bank. We have clauses we could sell. Scott Williams, I'm looking at you. Although, for 160k, don't think I'm going to sell that. And to wrap up the season, the end of season review. Drink it in. Enjoy it. This season has been a very, very good one. Signing of the season went to Trey George, who, of course, was injured to end the year. Actually had a really meh kind of end and second half to the season, but was amazing for the first half of the year. Really helped us on our way as we looked to recover from that bad start. Elsewhere, Robbie Smith. I talked about the 20 goals that he somehow got. I don't quite know how he ma managed to get to 20. I suppose he did get four in the FA Trophy, but 15 goals in the league as a regular sub is a really, really good return for him. And Aidan Wilson at centre-back, 7.25 rating, 43 starts. I'm going to say it. £3,000 well spent. Final position of second place. The second year in a row we did it. Thankfully, on this occasion, we were able to actually get promoted via the playoffs. We had the best goal difference outside of Boston United, who, to be honest, were absolutely immense this year. So much so that towards the end of the season, their manager actually got poached by Crawley Town, which I found kind of amusing. Of course, in the FA Cup, knocked out Portsmouth, knocked out Oldham, went Pretty toe-to-toe -to -toe with Southampton as well. A B-minus, apparently, for that. I don't know what more we were meant to do. And the FA Trophy, you've, you saw what happened. We have a trophy picture and everything, so it is official. We managed to win this competition, and on our way through six rounds, we kept four clean sheets. We were very good at the back. Financially, more competition money than previous years, and whilst a couple of areas were down, I think it was, on the overall, a net positive. You can see we've gone from local reputation to a regional reputation. We really are big time now. And in terms of the team and how we lined up this year, our Conte, Charles and Yer apparently were the three go-to strikers. To be honest, this season was 
a season unlike any previously, where there was a bit more in the way of, uh, I sup suppose, a fluidity to the way that we lined up. Last year, I didn't rotate things that much. This year, there was definitely more of that. I suppose that's shown by the fact that Slomani started 27 games and also came on off the bench 18 times. We had a bit more depth. I think that was the difference between this year and last year. Fans player of the season went to Robbie Yeh, young player of the season went to Brandon Charles, signing of the season, we already talked about it, Robbie Yeh, 27 goals, Brandon Charles, 6 player of the matches, 12 assists. I think it's safe to say, this man and this man are the reason we went up this year. Five players have broken into our overall best 11 as well, Benjamin, Arconte, McGuinness, Falbo and Robbie Yeh kind of unsurprising. And if you're wondering, Jack, what is the overall best 11 for your time here at Guernsey? Well, here it is on full display. If you're wondering, this is the 11. And I know that people are going to ask, how did NLBM do to end the season? Well, I'll tell you, he got 12 goals. No, 11 goals. I can't read numbers, apparently. 11 goals in 28. Apparently, he's exploring options at the end of his contract, which expires next year. I already know he won't get a work permit. So, I'm not going to make a bid and get upset about it. So board expectations for next season, and this is a big one. They just want us to attempt to avoid relegations. They kind of think we're going to go down. Of course, League 2, only two relegation spots. So it's a difficult league to drop out of. I would like to try and aim for the playoffs. That might be very, very ambitious. But in League 2, there are three automatic promotion spots and then four playoff spots. So seven teams are in and amongst the playoff picture. And Maidstone, who of course were promoted with us um, from the Vash Vanarama National League South, are actually in the final taking on Doncaster. So if they can climb up three leagues in four years, I want to believe we can follow in their footsteps and get out of League 2 sooner rather than later. So overall thoughts on this season, obviously great to get promoted. From a selfish YouTuber point of view, I did not want to be in the National League yet again. To finish second in the league twice in a row, I think is, you know, kind of a good showing of our credentials. We were a good team at this level. I don't think the step up is too vast. The biggest emotion I feel right now is just, yeah, re relief. I would not have wanted to be in the National League for another year. The fact we've made it through is nice. The fact that we're professional, though, to be honest, is the biggest thing. It's going to make the transfer special very, very interesting. Speaking of which, of course, we will be back for a transfer special next episode. We are now in the Football League. We are going to be professional, able to offer players full-time contracts. It's going to make maybe renewing our current players' contracts a little bit tricky, but what it should hopefully open up is a whole lot of more kind of players that we can actually sign. If that's not what happens, I'm very, very worried for a promotion to this next level. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you have enjoyed it, do drop a like on things. We will be back tomorrow with more Park to Prem action. Until then, take it easy. It's me, Jack, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.